Well, hello out there. Uh, thank you so much for listening to another new episode of NMPC+. Plus. Uh, first off, I should probably say I apologize for those listening and also for those watching. I apologize for the, for the, the nasality in my voice today. I'm fighting off a bit of a head cold, sinus, congestion, whatever. God is still good. I don't care. Um, I should probably introduce myself, though. My name is Josh. Uh, I am the worship pastor at New Mercy Palisades Church, little old church plant that could in Palisades Park. I am joined, as always, by Pastor Bobe. Hello, Pastor Bobe. Hello. I am joined by Pastor Key. Hello, Pastor Key. Hello. And we have a very special guest in the room today, all the way from... <laughs> Joy Christian Fellowship Church in Tenafly, <laughs> New Jersey. Uh, we want to give a special warm welcome to our very special guest, Pastor Doe Kim. Hello, Pastor Doe Kim. Thank you. Thank Woo-hoo. you for having me. And I made that really long trek. It was 15 minutes yep. long. It's, it <laughs> is a All trek. All 15 minutes. I mean, oh, at boy. this time of day, in this, in this uh, 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 area of Bergen County, it is a bit of a trek. I mean, you go, you go 10 minutes and you yeah. go, you know, 10, 10 feet from, from your house. So uh, <laughs> we appreciate you coming here and joining us on this, uh, this uh, podcast recording. Um, uh, to give a little bit of context uh, for people who are listening and for people who are watching, uh, Pastor Dohi Kim is a associate pastor yes. at mm-hmm. Joy Christian Fellowship in Tenafly, New Jersey. It's actually Englewood. Englewood, technically, Englewood. right on that border. Mm-hmm. That's right. Englewood, right New border. Jersey. Oh, yeah. They're new. They're new. Newish, yes, place. yes, right. So, Englewood, New- <laughs> let me get this right Joy Christian Fellowship in uh, Englewood, New Jersey. Pastor Doe, could you please give us a, a little bit of a rundown of your your roles, your responsibilities, your title at that church, and, and also maybe how long you've been serving there as well? Um, I've been serving at Joy for uh, a little over a year now. I started January 1st of 2022. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, my title is associate pastor. I am primarily in charge of adult education, spiritual formation, and uh, pastoral care plus uh, member care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. How how have you been enjoying it over there? Um, I love my coworkers, mm. um, and I actually really have grown to to really love the people there. Mm. Um, build really strong relationships. So they're the ones that keep me afloat. Yeah, nice. That's fantastic. Okay. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, is also another associate pastor over there, Pastor mm-hmm. Isaac. Mm-hmm. How is he treating you? Is he treating you okay? Uh, he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, we're watching, okay? There's nowhere. You, you, I want to get all the scoop today after, <laughs> after I press the record button. It goes off. That's when the real conversation happens. Um, uh, before we get into the sermon conversation, because we were very blessed to have you give the message this past Sunday, uh, I thought it might also be a good idea to maybe talk a little bit about, um, you know, the backstory. Where does where does Pastor Doe Kim come from? How mm. you know, like, uh, what's her background? What's her what's her upbringing? Where is she from? You know, I figured if we're gonna have a conversation about your message, it might also be uh, good to maybe preface it with a conversation uh, about who you are and sort of. Where you're coming from. So if, if I could, I'm just going to give you the floor, maybe take as much time as you want to sort of tell us a little bit about your upbringing, where you're from, where'd you go to high school, where, you know, where'd you go to seminary, kind okay. of that journey um, all in between. And yeah, please tell us a little bit about that. Okay, sure. Um, it's a lot. It's, it's a loaded yeah, thing. I know yeah, it yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, my family immigrated. Wow, well, I'm going really back. Please. Uh, my family immigrated when I was nine months old. Mm-hmm. And my parents had five girls. And wow. I am number four. Nice. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm, I'm neither really in the middle, the youngest, oldest. So it was just kind of, um, you know, many times I felt kind of lost, mm-hmm. you know, because... Mm-hmm. You, uh, parents pay a lot of attention to the first few, but then toward the end, they're just so tired, right? Yeah. So um, I, I have these memories. Uh, I have this one memory of being lost um, at a major amusement park um, because there were so many kids to look after that uh, the family had moved on to the next ride without me. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, so I do have memories like that. <laughs> um, but overall, uh, I had a great upbringing. I belong to a church, um, and that's where I was really formed mostly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I 
uh, was able to have an accountability group uh, that came out of that group of church members, mm. and we still meet together now. Wow. And Pastor Mimi is actually one of them. Yeah, we love, love Pastor her. Mimi. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. do too. And Since so, <laughs> diapers, right? Yep. Wow. So I came when I was nine months old. She came when she was seven months old, and we all ended up at the same church. Oh, wow. and so we have pictures of us when we we're like really tiny. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So. I want we to see that. those pictures. Yeah. Oh, I could show you. Yeah. So I have those um, pictures, and um, uh, they still are my um, biggest source of encouragement. Mm. Anytime I need prayer, anything, uh, they're the first people that I cacao. We have mm. a nice chat mm. room. Yeah. And we try to meet up annually um, for a retreat. Um, so, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. This is a personal retreat between... Yeah, yeah, among the six of us. Oh, wow. Six. Yeah. That's fantastic. Wow. Where yeah. do you usually meet? Um in the past, we've met at either people's homes or we've actually uh, went to like a hotel. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Treat you <know>? yourself. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Vegas, go to Hawaii. That way. Oh, but this past year, we went to uh, Los Cabos. Wow. Because nice. oh. uh, we were celebrating our 30th. See. Yeah. Upgrade, wow. upgrade. Nice. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I may have missed it, but you immigrate when you're nine months old. Yeah. Uh, four of. Fourth of five daughters. Yes. Uh, where did you immigrate to initially? Oh, Maryland. So, Maryland. Yeah. So okay. the church that we all met in was the first uh, was First Pres- Presbyterian Church of Maryland, mm. and uh, we grew up in what was called the Korean ghettos, and it was called that because everybody there was Korean, mm. and uh, we were all very poor, mm. and so we all played outside a lot. We would play all these Korean games. Mm. Um, sometimes gangs would come through, and then we would all scatter like yeah. cockroaches. <laughs> Yeah. And then when they uh, would disappear, then we'll come back out yeah. to the surface. Wow. 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 Did yeah. you play Squid Game? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a Korean game? Like the actual. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I, I think they're know. playing that in Korea, not in the hoods of Maryland. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, my parents were always hardworking. <laughs> mm. um, we owned uh, stores throughout my whole upbringing. Um, they were robbed, you know, so many times. Like yeah, gunpoint, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and, um, wow, you know, all these... These are kind of sad stories, though. <laughs> no, um, right? Yeah. It's good to uh, hear, though. We were, my, my mom had a brain tumor, and so oh. uh, we were all at the store except for my mom, and then we were uh, being robbed. And my dad saw uh, the person who was stealing, so then he ran after him. So then all of us uh, decided to run out with him, and then... Um, I mean, the guy didn't have a weapon, except he was on a a, a bike. Mm-hmm. He was a cyclist, and uh, he took out his um, his uh, bike chain. You know, the ones oh that my. have a lock on the end. Yeah, yeah. And he decided that he was going to swing it, and I got hit. Oh, what? Yeah, <laughs> and so it was really, really. Oh um, I was in seventh, in eighth grade. It was a very traumatic experience. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so going to the hospital and, and I, at that age, I felt particularly guilty cause my mom was sick, you know, mm, but then I felt no. like this guilt, I don't know what you, you know, a feeling like I was adding to her stress oh, and no. burden. And then we had to go to court and, you know, I, I, at a very early age, I learned that the, um, the judicial system here, is pretty bad. Mm. Um, mm. yeah, we did go to court, but you know, we didn't win because they had put me on the stand. The defense attorney had put me on the stand and I just didn't answer the questions properly. Mm. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was that. Wow. Well, so seventh grade, you have this <laughs> yeah, traumatic no. experience. I'm like making a picture of myself. That's really no, 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 no. Hey, we're going to find our way through this. <laughs> seventh grade, you have this traumatic experience. Yes. And uh, are you going to church by this time? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So tell me. So tell me a little bit about how do you like how do you get past that? Because not, I mean, it's not just that you're young, but it's a very formidable age, mm-hmm. um, and it is a very traumatic thing. So then, like, what do you do to get through that? It, are you still kind of lingering? Are you still worried? Are you scared? Can you ever go back to the store or? Uh, you know, how do you make sense of, of life in, in a place like that with that kind of experience sort of looming over you like that? Yeah, you know, I had the advantage of belonging to a church that uh, was really tight in it. Like I said, my accountability group comes for that group. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember uh, news went out really fast that I was hospitalized. And um, I remember 
I remember coming back to church one Sunday and everybody, you know, especially the adults were, you know, telling me what a great daughter I am. And I felt super guilty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think it depends on your personality, but mm-hmm. like that kind of attention made me feel very uncomfortable. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't feel like, they kept calling me a hero, but I did not feel like a hero. If mm-hmm. anything, I felt bad because my dad is the one, to me, the hero. Because after the guy did all that, oh, my sister, my uh, oldest sister got hit too on the lip. So she had to get stitches. But, oh, my um, gosh. Uh, my dad actually chased down the guy, blocks, chased him down. And, he, you know, that night when he came to the hospital, you know, sat by my bedside, I remember him telling me, you know, that he chased him down. And, you know, he thought he was going to lose him, you know. But it, it was because there was a fence and the guy couldn't get over it. And so he was trying to climb the fence. And so he pulled him down. And, oh, it just sounds bad. I guess this is the, the reaction of a, of a father, but he pulled him down and he was punching him. I, I That's saw what him. I'm talking about. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> I saw his hands and they were all cut up. And, oh, you know, wow. like, you know? That's what I want to hear. Easy does it over there on that side of the table. I love her. <laughs> um, but... You know, in college, I uh, majored in English, English Lit, and I, uh, as my concentration, I did uh, creative writing. And I think it's because all my life I had to try to process that day. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and so I've written so many iterations of that story, oh, wow. you know, um, which has really helped me. And um, like during the L.A. riots, you know, it really, mm. you know, got even worse and then you know even of more recent um all the stuff that was coming up um with um yeah anyway asian hate yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah so um seventh grade to college you told us a little bit about that college experience for you um so did you continue to go to church and all that stuff all throughout Um, I did. And then when I was 17, I uh, was confronted with my older sister who decided that uh, the Christian faith was really um, a type of propaganda, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um, And so um, I actually abandoned my faith for three years. I did not Mm -hmm. touch the Bible, could not Mm -hmm. read it, could not touch it. Um, So I went through the first uh, three years of my college life uh, not wanting to to um, associate Mm -hmm. though I did continue to go to church and again it had to Mm. do with the community sure yeah sure and that's what held it all together right so I would go every Sunday but I would like listen to the sermon so critically I mean like really critically sure Um, and then I um one day, um, I, uh, you know, every time I think about how I came back, I just am uh, astounded. And I can only say that um, it had nothing to do with me, mm. mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Um, it really was God's grace um, and, and the way it all happened. Yeah. Because, you know, I came to faith when I was in seventh grade at a youth retreat. Yeah. And even that happened because um, um, I, I would say the spirit allowed me to realize how sinful I was. And I was crying so desperately knowing how sinful I was. And, and we were singing this song. It's a really old song. Is, um, um, the greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. Hmm. We're singing this. And for the first time, I was like, I'm singing words and I should really mean it. And uh, as we were singing it, uh, I, I was really meaning it. And then... Um, I, was, I just broke down in tears. And then all the like older youth group people came mm. around me and one of the older sisters came and she just wrapped herself around me mm. and that made me cry even more because mm. it was a tangible like way of a, uh, a community coming mm. to, you know around you and that was so formative for me that um i think even to this day you know the, the community that's built in a church is such an important part of um how a person um develops in their faith yeah 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 wow that that's a thank you for sharing that story. I, I mean, I, I'm sure, um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot there, and I'm sure that we can kind of go on and on, and and not to ha- have to make you relive um, all of that, mm. all of that stuff. Um, but I'm just, I'm thankful that you 
kind of shared a little bit of that that heart piece with us. Um, I'm wondering then if we can maybe um, jump a little bit ahead to maybe your entry into ministry um, mm. and kind of what the what the time period was. Have you like you know how long have you been in ministry? Has it been a while? Has it been a short time? Or can you just kind of elaborate a little bit about? Um, your your entry into the ministry? Yeah, sure. So the church that I grew up in, um, they needed someone to be the director of the children's ministry. Hmm. And when I was 19, um, I, the the role had fallen on me. Um, and I took it gladly because um, I, I love working with kids uh, and I do like teaching. And so that was my first entree into an actual role and yeah. feeling responsible for something. And then... Um, you know, all throughout college and through um, grad school, um, you know, um, I, I had moved up from that church into a, it was a, I, I don't know if you call it these things mega churches anymore. Mm. You know, sure. Where the population, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, you, know, you have more than 2,000 members. Mm. And so I was at a church that uh, was fairly big, and um, the, the person who was chief of staff there had asked me if I wanted to do the children's ministry. Mm. And so uh, it all came about because she was having a conversation with me and she uh, realized that my passion was for her kids. Mm, mm. And so she asked me. And so I was like, yeah. And so I felt really honored that mm. she would ask. And so then I took on that role. And um, I learned so much during that time. Um, you know, I was also, uh, this was a part time position. Uh, I was also a grad student at the same time. And um, as a grad student, um, I was given the privilege of teaching at the college, um, it was a state university, hmm. uh, Maryland. Um, is this when, is this when you were taking your MFA or getting your MFA? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I was juggling so many things. I was doing my MFA. I was teaching classes at the, uh, at the university, but you know, it was, my classes were like 22 students and I would have to teach two yeah. classes. So it would be 44. And this is a writing class. So mind you, these are... <laughs> papers that they oh, would turn and goodness. it was so much grading sure. and then i'm in charge of a whole department with so many kids i have like 29 teachers under me and i had, would have these horrible migraines all the oh, time no. because i was so stressed um and when i think about it now i'm like you are crazy i don't know why you... <laughs> <laughs> wow. and i don't know how you survive yeah. yeah 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 but you know it got done and i enjoyed it and i when i think back on that time i think wow those are really exciting things we were doing i um, but yeah. And then I got into a period where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Hmm. And so, you know, I was pursuing other things and, um, but all the while I was still going to church, um, and I was serving in some capacity, like, you know, serving on the, with youth group teaching or something. Yep. Um, and then, um, you know, I think I shared a little bit of this about how I realized, oh my goodness, the thing that really brought me so much joy, the talent that I was given, uh, I just totally decided to hide it. And then I returned back to ministry. And so when I was at Grace, I started, um, even that, it was Pastor Mimi who knew... Um, Shout who, out to Pastor Mimi. I know. Yeah. She should be sitting here right She's, now. Honestly. Where is she? Where is she? she? She's the golden thread. <laughs> She, uh, she the, her church was having a retreat, and uh, Pastor David Choi had oh, nice. come to visit, mm. and they were looking for someone to do their children's ministry. So mm. he had asked her, "Do you know of anyone?" She was like, "Yeah," and so um, she told him to uh, contact me, and then, and then that's how that happened. Nice. Yeah, and so then I was doing that for a while, and then my role transitioned from just children to children and families, and I did that for eight years, mm. and then. Um, I was going through the ordination process, which was really um, difficult. Hmm. And, um, and then now I'm at Joy. And um, But, you know, I should mention, you know, my, when, I, when I was a kid, you would have these revivals and they would have mm. these like so-called altar calls yeah. Yeah. where they would ask people, you know, if you feel that you're called to ministry, come up to the front. Mm. You know, the pastors here want to pray for you. And um, I remember going up thinking, um, yeah, I really feel called to ministry. Um, and I would go up. But then when you go up, what they would do is, um, you know, he, he, uh, he would pray that I, I would become a tzalanyin. 
Oh my you know? goodness. And I was thinking to myself, mm, that's not what I was thinking. Yeah. But yeah, sure, I receive that prayer. Um, yeah. So the road has not been easy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot there that we can unpack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not going to go there. We're not going to have feelings there. about it, all right? Especially We're not going to go us. there. Yeah, we could go a lot of different places. Um, how about this? Thank you for sticking it out. Yeah, yeah Aww, seriously. Similar. Thank you for having the faith. Um, thank you for... Um, let me even say this. Thank you for running away for a while because mm. then you found that a life away from him just didn't compare to yeah. a life with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and through a thousand different lefts, rights, ups and downs, um, we kind of have you here with us and you you carry the, the weight of your history. You carry the weight of all that stuff. And so I believe that goes a long way. Mm. And so um, maybe instead of... Uh, talking down all of those other things, let me just say thank you. Thank yeah. you for hanging on. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing with us. Um, thank you for giving just a little bit of context and surely like a 20 minute little <laughs> kind of intro into your life is not gonna, it's not gonna say everything that we need to know or mm. hear. Um, but uh, maybe just maybe it, it gives us that little bit extra for us to have um, incredible empathy for, for maybe what happens next. But just thank you. Yeah. You know? And thank, thank you, you for, for coming. Saying that. No, yeah, really. Um, <laughs> words do fail. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but thank you for coming to our area too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Good seriously. to have you here. Thank yeah. you for for gracing us with your uh, with your message. Also, this past Sunday, yeah. um, to to get right into it, um, to kind of transition a little bit. Your message this past Sunday um, was on Matthew twenty five. It was the parable of the talents. Um, for those that I'm not going to read the whole thing, but for those um, that are unfamiliar, it's it's the passage in which a master um, he has three slaves, three servants. Um, to each of them, he gives a certain amount of talents, um, and then he goes away. The talents um, are up to the slaves or the servants to do with them what they will when they come back. Um, each of the slaves uh, has a different amount of talents to give back to the master, but the third one, uh, that that third one, um, <laughs> gives back the same amount, kind of says, Master, I knew you were a hard person, sowing where you do not, or reaping where you do not sow. Um, and, and you kind of um, talked about that message. That's just the passage itself. That's a rundown of the passage itself. Uh, I wondered if you can give us maybe a little bit of a, a, a refresher about where you were trying to go with that particular passage, Matthew mm-hmm. 25, sort of what your heart was, um, maybe like the big overarching points. Um, we'll sort of take it from there afterwards. But yeah, could you give us a little bit of a refresher about your message this past Sunday? Um, yeah. You know, um, I think what I'm most concerned about for my own spiritual um, journey is my heart's motivation. Mm. And uh, what compels me to want to live for God or to do anything for God. And um, I really do think that this passage speaks to that. Mm -hmm. Um, It's challenging in that way. Um, It's uh, really um, a hard word if you really think about all the ramifications of it. And, um, you know, at at the end of the day, um, I I think there's so many different ways to approach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And, you know, um, I I, want to stray away from like a more negative vision of why you would ever do anything. So uh, I I personally don't think like um, hell is a good motivator for me. Hmm. Instead, I would rather have, or, um, you know, especially when I preach, especially to young people, to preach a, a, a positive vision um, rather than a negative vision of um, what the gospel is. Hmm. And so um, I, I do think when this parable is looked at properly, it is a very positive vision, hmm. that it is um, the vision of wanting to um, know the heart of God, knowing um, and in that knowing, you realize, oh my gosh, God loves us so much that He would trust us, that He would um, call us to be partners in this big work that He's doing, and that He is equipping everyone to do it. Yeah. And um, that to me is such a positive vision. And um, yeah, that's what I really wanted to communicate. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I mean, Pastor Key and I were in the room, but Pastor Bobby, were you? did you get a chance to listen to the message at all? Yes. Yes. 
Sorry, could you fiddle with the input on that mic? There's something... I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay, one more time. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Can you so, hear me now? Yeah, there we yeah, go. There, there we go. go. Um, uh, I, I'd, love, I'd love to get your initial thoughts. I mean, so many of our people also, um, so many of our people had so many wonderful things. But I, I, if I could just kind of throw over to uh, Pastor Key, Pastor Bobe for a second. I'd love to get your initial thoughts on the message, kind of mm-hmm. what you were feeling, the, the sort of, um, you know, like what are the first things that sort of came to mind as you were listening uh, to this message and kind of how you're interacting with it? My daughter loved your voice. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think uh, what struck me as I was listening was just how the word, I mean, the word I used on Sunday was what a solid exegesis it was. It was very thoughtful. Uh, it It didn't avoid the hard parts, but really dove into it, and it illuminated the text in a way that was true to the text. Mm. Uh, and for me, uh, I, I think I shared this on Sunday as well, it was my favorite uh, sermon on that passage I've ever heard, like honestly. Um, and then it was interesting when I went to play golf that night at the yep. screen golf, yep. uh, Chung, one of our congregants, mm-hmm. that's what he said. He, one said of our, was, yeah. he said it was his favorite sermon on that passage as, as well. So, uh, But yeah, I, I, for me, what really did it was the whole beaming story Mm -hmm. because I never saw it that way. And I realized, Oh my gosh, that's, that's exactly right. You know, I think that's exactly how the father is seeing this and, and how those servants were seeing their duty, right. Or their, their, their calling or their privilege. And so that was fantastic. And then the, the way you, um, because a lot of people don't realize that the third servants, um, comments about the master are his projection of the master, right? There, mm-hmm. He's like basically slandering the guy, right? Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. And I really love the way you unpack that. And it was really beautifully done. So I loved it. Yeah. What about you, Pastor Bobby? What were your initial thoughts when you listened to the message? I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say every time somebody yeah. asks me about a message. Pastor but, Joey, we're, we're working on getting her a button. And yeah, when she hits that button, it's going to say, it was good. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few buttons that I'm known to ha- ha- supposed to have. I'm about it. But yeah, something like that. I don't know. Whatever, guys. <laughs> um, we love you. We love you. <laughs> no, but I thought it was really good. I felt like it was such a timely message for mm. a com- uh, our congregation. Um, and, mm. you know, I think sometimes even as we re- read this passage on our own or for me, when I've heard other preachers, sometimes it can be very like, you're not doing enough, you know, mm, what yeah. are you wasting your talents for? Yeah. But the way you um, shared your heart and the way you unpacked the um, scripture felt so encouraging. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I'm not doing anything with my life. It's like, what can I do? Like, how can I partner with the Lord? And yeah, just, you know, I'm always listening afterwards. And as I was listening, I was like, man, like, it felt like all I can think about was how timely this message was yeah. for um church. So yeah, it was good. It was very good. It was my personal favorite of yours. Yes. <laughs> Because it's the only one. <laughs> I know. But it's number one. One of one. <laughs> one of one. You're you're at a hundred percent with me. Top two. Let's keep it that way. Okay. Let's keep it that way. Top two. I was, I was waiting for the punch. Yeah. I was like, well, where is this going? Yeah. I was just hoping y'all just got it. You know? I didn't want to have to say the other part. There's, there's something wrong with the math of this thing, but uh, seems a little stacked. I mean, we can go on and on. Um, Will Patrick Mac uh, kind of at dinner, you know, afterwards, and we can go on and on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I wanted to maybe be the today. I, I thought it, if I can maybe be the contrarian, not to mm-hmm. the quality of the sermon. The quality of the sermon was up there, one of one, one of one. <laughs> um, but I, I wondered if today we might do an interesting thing, and I'll be the contrarian okay. as I often mm-hmm. am um, uh, with this podcast, and. Uh, I, I want to ask some hard questions too, because while, yes, I felt the same things, I felt like this is good exegesis. This is um, a wonderful display of you don't 
you don't go away from the hard thing. You lean into it. You find yeah. the truth in the middle of the hard thing. Mm -hmm. But then you also take great encouragement from the good thing that's coming, entering into the joy of your master. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite um, like collection of words in all of the Bible, the idea that you would enter into the joy of your master. Right. Mm. But uh, there was a part of me that as I was listening to the message, uh, maybe this is just how I'm wired. There was a part of my heart where let me go right to that third servant, right? Because mm -hmm. um, that's where you start to really find the turn, I feel like, in that mm -hmm. parable, right? Um, let me go right to that third servant. That, ser that third servant would say, um, Master, I knew you were a hard man. I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. And... If it was that alone, Pastor Key, I think I might be where you are mm -hmm. in believing that that's really just a projection of the servant's uh, insecurities or how he views the master, right? That's really just a projection of that. And and I still think that a lot of it is there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know what really kind of throws me for a loop sometimes? Mm -hmm. And I love how you opened. You said this is a preposterous mm -hmm. uh, uh, a parable. Um, I, here's what I think is really preposterous about this. The master then says, um, you wicked and slothful servant, you knew I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. And then he eventually takes the talents from him and takes it and gives it to the one who has 10 talents, right? And cast the worthless servant, servant into the outer darkness. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a part of me that says the servant didn't know wh who he was looking at. The servant mm -hmm. didn't know who he was mm -hmm. serving. Mm -hmm. There's another part of me, the scared part of me, the one that, um, if I'm really honest, the servant that knew something. The servant knew something. Mm -hmm. If the master's response was really, you wicked and slothful servant. So you knew. I'm adding the so. It says, mm -hmm. you knew I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. And then thereafter, take the talents from him, give it to the one who has 10 and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. Okay, Pastor Dohi, <laughs> I, am, I am an attender mm -hmm. of church. And I hear something like that. I read something like that in the Bible, mm -hmm. right? This is not somebody else's twisted, you know, of, of the word. I read it in the Bible and I go, Oh, so, so that master was scary. Mm -hmm. And that master was hard. And that master did have something against that servant. Could you, could you speak into that a little bit? Could you maybe help me out here? Because wonderful. The other two servants, they did what they were supposed to do and more was given and more was given back. But what about that third one? Where did that third one go wrong, really? Yeah, um, you know, I, I didn't spend too much time on this, and I really wanted to, and I, I think I just really briefly said it, but um, it's the actions of the characters really speak louder yeah. than whatever they say. And so you have to weigh that this master actually trusted even this servant mm. with so much right. of his own um, um, possession yeah. and his name. And so that should, should weigh more than when you do the balance sheet, sure, right? The other thing is, is um, it is a parable. And um, and so, um, you know, I try to touch upon this too, that you, you cannot do like a one-to-one -one, like uh, comparison or ratio of uh, that God is this, mm. just like this master is in the story. But you know, if you do a, a more thorough um, like study of that passage, when the uh, master uh, says, um, you know, you knew that I was this, um, it's not so much him um, confirming that he is that, but saying to the the servant, I'm using your own words, mm -hmm. you know, and this is what you think of me. And if that were so, you know, and then it, then it always reminds me of uh, the passage in the um, Bible where, uh, you know, the, the measure that you use to judge others will be the measure that is used on yourself. Yeah. You know, um, and so, you know, I always think, oh, you know, you, 
um, be gracious because um, at the end of the day, that same measure would be used. You know? yeah. So I, I always think about what I want is a heaping measure of grace so that, you know, later on when God looks upon me, he'll, he'll look upon me with a heaping measure of grace sure. kind of thing. And for the uh, that servant to think that, um, you know, b- being so uh, critical of a master um Sadly enough, that is the kind of judgment or the the standard on which that he is being um, judged to in that moment. Mm. And um, yeah, um, I, 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 you know, Matthew as a gospel writer compared to all the others, it seems he seems so very strong on. Um, like um, that, that judgment that will mm. come at the end. Yeah, yeah. And you know the way he talks about you know that you'll be thrown out and there'll be gnashing of teeth. And it's, uh, I believe he's the only one who uses that phrase. Um, yeah. So you know, uh, taking all that into measure, I don't take lightly what he's saying. Um, I because I do take it as that it, it it is what Jesus said. Sure. Um, and I just have to take it for face value. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'd love for you guys to get into it. I mean, because, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, I I haven't heard these exact words coming out of any church member that I know, yeah. um, but a shade of it. I've heard mm-hmm. shades of it, right? And, and all of us as pastors, in all, all throughout our, our ministries, at, at different points, we've heard shades of something like this where... I don't know. I don't know that I can do it because what if I mess up, right? Yeah. Or I don't know that I want to do it because, you know, what has God done in my life personally that I'm supposed to work for Him, right? So I've heard shades of it, and and so when I hear something like that, and when I read something like this here in Matthew twenty five thirteen to thirty, uh, twelve fourteen to thirty. And when I hear your message, I'm brought back to that place, yeah. right? Where I'm hearing shades of it. And I, and Key and Boba, I, I want you guys to speak into it too from your experience. But for me, I go, that's not necessarily my experience of the Lord. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's because, and this is not me patting myself on the back, but maybe it's just because my heart is closer, I feel, if I'm honest, to the first and second. But we have swaths of our churches that are that include the third servant here, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I I, I want to be the first and second servant. I want to be the one that says, Master, look what I have done. I, I hope you are pleased and I hope that this has brought pleasure to your eyes. But I also know that some of the people that we speak to are going, God, I don't know what you think you're going to get from me because I'm scared of you. Hmm. And I'm scared of what's going to happen if I do this thing and I step out of line or I do this thing or I mess up or, 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 you know, do you know what I mean when Mm -hmm. I say that? Right. So it's, and, and the nature of parables is that it reveals not only tells. Right. And so, uh, yeah, I I just wanted us to speak into that. Yeah. (laughs) There's a lot there. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that's interesting about this parable is I think the first two servants understood that the master was not somebody to be trifled with. Right. There's a healthy respect there. Mm -hmm. And they lived their life on balance of that respect and also that joy. Yeah. Whereas I feel like a third servant, um, believe it or not, despite his words being what they were, his actions show that he actually doesn't respect the master. Right. And he was trying to weasel his way out. And um, and what's interesting is the master shows himself to be a person not to be trifled with. And I, I really agree with Pastor Dohi in that the projection that he says was the reason why he didn't do it, which I don't think was a real reason. He's saying, uh, the, the master says, I'm going to use your projection to judge you. If that's really what you you know, thought of me, yeah. and that's really blah, 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 let's do that, right? Uh, and I don't know. I think... That, I mean, the, the Bible calls it the fear of the Lord, right? I think the, the healthy, reverent, awe, not trifling with God is a tension that you can't really throw out, you know? And, but I, I, I do believe that that tension can be there and still have this really amazing, joy-filled um, image of the father that's real. The, you know what I found in my life, and this is this I, I, I've noticed this I've, as I've gotten older. Oftentimes, the way I think of God 
is the way I experience him. Mm. Mm. And so as I've grown up, as I've seen him and understood him to be the loving father that I read on the pages of scripture, that's what I've been experiencing, right? Now, that doesn't mean these, um, the more serious or fearsome aspects of God are thrown, thrown out, but they're, they're understood in the context of that love. And so before it was a distortion, like, oh, he's going to whip me for every little bad thing I do. But then I grew up and like, no, that's not the way he functions. Yeah. Right. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like there's a maturity in the first two servants that you don't see in the third one. And, and in fact, I think the third servant is really more sinister than even we understand, maybe just from reading it. Uh, so I, I think the it seems like in a, it's an extreme punishment, but it's almost commensurate to what's really probably inside of him, you know. And so that's kind of how I, I understand that passage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. More sinister. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, because <laughs> you know, on the one hand, I feel like the the master when he says wicked and lazy, he doesn't seem like a person who's um, who's going to exaggerate. You know, he probably, and I almost feel like that talent was giving this guy a chance, you know, but I don't know. Anyway, Bobe, why don't you jump in here? I don't know, guys. <laughs> I mean, I definitely agree with like what everybody said. <laughs> what? What? That's this the third is, button. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is, I think it's a little bit hard for me mm. because I think that interaction with the third servant reveals so much of how all of us feel about the Lord and what mm. he's given to us. Mm -hmm. um, but then his response is, you know, like, I think I like what you said, like, you can't do one for one ratio, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that's right. Um, and so I feel like a lot of times people look at the great people, people that have been given much, and think, oh, of course they would use it like that because God gave them that much. Why wouldn't they use it, right? And then you look at the one, this one got, this servant got one. And they're like, ah, oh, it makes sense. Like, you could feel that way. And I think sometimes when we don't know the purpose as to what God's given to us or why he gave it to us, we can have the same type of heart. And so I do, and, but then we're talking about the scary aspect of the response, you mm -hmm. know, like that some people in our congregation may be scared. And I do agree. A lot of it is because that's been our response. I mean, our experience with the Lord. And a lot of times it's not actually God. It's just the people that shared God with us, whether it be like a pastor or like, you know, even like our parents that gave us this harsh um, caricature. punishment or caricature of the Lord. Like I've heard people say to their children, oh, if you do that, God's not going to be happy with you, <laughs> yeah. you know? Oh and I'm like, oh my God. Every time I hear it, I'm like, oh my God, please. I'm like, <laughs> like the, because that's not true. Yeah. So I don't have like a nice answer. But that's something to be wrestled with, I think. It speaks to, I think, definitely the way you measure, like to the measure you use, you'll be, um, you know, judged as well. But also like what kind of thoughts do we have about the Lord that is making us more scared than we actually should be. Because mm. if anything, that mm. type of scary is like existent, is the same probably to the second and the first servant. It's just they decided to trust in what the what the master has given to them and do much with it, right? That allowed them to enter into the joy of the master. So there's a lot of, yeah. you know. Can I throw a couple couple possibilities Please. in here? I feel like um, let's take that that um, understanding that it's not a one to one correlation between the the master parable and the the master in the parable and God Himself, right? Could it be that at the end Jesus is telling this parable and saying, you know, in a worldly situation, this is probably how you'd be treated, right? And I'm curious if that's just like Jesus mm -hmm. kind of saying that 
But then the other part of me is like, let's bring the gospel into this situation, right? What does the gospel say about even the filthiest and vilest of sinners? And it's that Jesus is the one who's cast out into the darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth so that even a servant like this doesn't get thrown into that situation. And, yeah. and I'm curious if, um, you know, because a lot of these gospel writers, they're, they're weaving together kind of a theological vision of mm-hmm. who Jesus is, right? And maybe that at the end, Jesus crucified or Jesus you know, in Gethsemane and then Jesus being crucified uh, is Matthew saying, hey, this is actually Jesus took that. We're not going to be cast out because he was cast out for us. Uh, and that's how we're, that's supposed to be the ultimate interpretive grid through which we see this. And I'm curious if that takes that, um, that talk, not toxic, but that, that, that like vengeful thing out of our image of God and, and leaves us with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know. Those are just, I'd have to really wrestle with this and explore this on my own, but, but those are just some thoughts I've had and I think they could lead to healthy places. Sure. Sure. You know, uh, one, I'm uh, yeah. Well, one, one of the things that's coming up right now, uh, uh, part of where my brain is going right now is, and, uh, uh, pastor, you had mentioned this, um, in the message, uh, kind of towards the beginning, you, you had even mentioned, um, the, the, parable of the prodigal son Mm -hmm. you had mentioned something about that and and for me there's a part of me that goes okay so on this end and as a pastor i wrestle with the idea that like i've heard shades of this person Mm -hmm. right but i also there's a part of me that wrestles with like well it's not like we're gonna find those one-to-one comparisons Mm -hmm. in our churches or in ourselves either right Mm -hmm. because um, uh, just like the point that you made about the prodigal son, the father in that story, while there is a lot of good to be drawn out, that's not the perfect picture of who Jesus is, who God is in our yeah. lives, right? Mm-hmm. Who God is at all, his nature, his character. Mm-hmm. It can't even be portrayed in words on a page alone. Mm-hmm. And in this, in a similar way, uh, I mean, how much, how much of myself should I be seeing mm-hmm. or I, I don't even know how, how else to say it, but it, but is it even right that when I see this and when I see the, f- the first servant, the second servant, the third servant, when I see the master, is it right that I have already like inserted myself there and I've, I've, I see shades of other people <laughs> in here, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Please, I, you know, I'll start with Pastor Toby, and, and I'll also would love yeah. to hear what everyone else yeah. wants to That's say about good it. Good question. Yeah, like, how, how much of myself can I see? Should mm-hmm. I see? Is it right to see? Is it even helpful to see? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, actually, we're supposed to see ourselves in these parables. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Right? And I guess... Which one do we serve? Yeah. yeah. So I want you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think that's the point of the parable, that you're supposed to see yourself in actually all the characters. Mm. And I think that's why it is it's so very living. Oh, interesting. Um, so even if you take the uh, par- uh, parable of the prodigal son, you are meant to see yourself not only as one of the sons, but also oh. as the other. Yeah. And ultimately as uh, the father, mm. the one who is so compassionate oh. that you would um, welcome and bring in. Um, anybody who is lost. Yeah. Uh, so even in this, um, I I really think that um, the gut reaction you're supposed to have is supposed to say, I really don't want to be the third. Sure. <laughs> you know, sure. and so uh, if that's the the way you're supposed to see yourself in the parable, then I think that's good. You know, um, so even if someone says, ah, oh, you know, but I feel like I'm more like the third where I am really not using my talents for the glory of God or mm. something, even in that moment, um, I would say, you know, um, like, so, so for instance, if someone from, um, like, um, someone wanted counseling about that, you know, a, a member of the church came and said, you know, I really feel really bad because I don't feel that I'm using, and I feel more like the third um slave than any of the other. I would say, yeah, um, but even your attitude right now is so different from that slave yeah. who isn't, I feel so bad. That's right. It's, um, well, God, you, you know, it's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like appalling to say that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to what Pastor Key was saying, you know, uh, there's no reverence in it. Um, but 
I, I really think God is so gracious that if your attitude is, you know, I have failed, um, I didn't produce anything for you because I was just so scared, I honestly don't think that um, um, our, our God would um, reject that, you know. But if if your answer is, God, you suck, then yeah. I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. <laughs> sure, sure. That's, yeah. that's kind of a dead end right yeah. there in terms of, yeah. I hear what you're saying. I actually like that in your sermon. You brought that out. You said, hey, if his response was this, which is probably how many of us would respond, I actually don't think he would have been like that. Mm -mm. You know, so I think that's a good point. Mm. Um, You have thoughts? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, the same, I think. Like, I think you should see yourself. I Like, just looking at myself, like my life, I've seen multiple, I've seen myself in one season as the son that ran away from Mm -hmm. home and then the one that stayed home, right? And here too, like, I think when I, maybe in the previous years, I'll be like, oh, what do I have, right? What is that one thing I have? Because I didn't know what one thing I have. But now I feel like I have more than one. And part of it is because I saw myself in the one and thought about what can I do with the one thing. Mm. Mm. And it's grown. And now I'm looking at this parable like I've got more now. So what do I do? How do I continue to grow this for the glory of God? So, yeah, I feel the same way. Mm. Uh, I'm so happy that you <laughs> that you took it there uh, because that's that's exactly where I want to go next. Um, the other hard part, I, I think, with any um, just... Bible-believing Christian that reads a story like this, a parable like this, is we read it and then we have trouble with, the, okay, fine, let me let me seriously examine and let me seriously understand like who I am and that I should be the one that is trying to do whatever they can to increase um, the gifts, the talents, the whatever. So it's the thing of like, what are my quote-unquote talents, right? I, I, I don't necessarily mean... The talents, you know, and this is just a, a consequence of the the fact that the Bible is written in a different language than English, mm. right? Um, and so we go like, what are my talents? And we sort of take it literally, right? Yeah. But here, the parable of the talents, talents is a unit of money, mm. right? And, you know, um, there are some times when I have to tell someone like, you know, God isn't only talking about money, right? Mm-hmm. He, he, sometimes it's another thing, like your talents here. It's not necessarily like the thing here is a unit of money, but in your life, it could be a unit of, of, of heart or, or effort or time. Right. Um, and then to other people, sometimes I go like, you know, there is a, there is a money component. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we wrestle with it every week when we do things like tithe and offering, Mm -hmm. we have to have a good steady diet of this is important in the life and expression of our church, not because God wants to take your money but because there's an obedience aspect to it and, and, mm. and a partnering aspect to, to, to why we do tithe and offering. So I wonder if we, if we could speak into the idea of, okay, what, how do we understand, how do we even identify what our talents are mm. in here? Like this side of the cross here in modern day, in contemporary society, Bible-believing Christian reads something like this and says, okay, let me, let me try to understand what the talents are. How do we identify the talents, what do we do with them? Where should we go first? What's a good, like, first couple steps um, in order to uh, sort of be on the right side of this parable and not the wrong side of it? Any thoughts? You know, when I think about this parable, um, um, you are, uh, I think you're absolutely correct that, that it has to do with money because there's a language of commerce and trade that is just implicit in it. And... Um, Whenever you talk about um, uh, trade, um, and I, I think that's the component of this parable that I find so fascinating, that whatever it is that um, you are good at, and I would even go as simple as to say it's it's the love of uh, God. If you have that, there is an ability that you have to actually go and interact with somebody else, trade it mm. so that it, it increases. Mm. You know, so it's not so much um, like um, I'm so good at playing the guitar, I'm going to, you know, increase it. I'm going to multiply myself um, all by myself in a studio Mm -hmm. um, and no one else could hear. But then, you know, I'm going to increase it. 
doesn't happen. The whole idea is that it has to happen in、um, interaction with other people because there has to be some sort of exchange that's made that increases、mm. increases it. Yeah, you know,、um, and so even if you are really new to faith. Uh, you're you're new to faith because you have been really touched by the love of Jesus. That is a is a talent、mm. to be able to recognize it and to be able to when you see someone else and you're part of a church now. When someone else comes who's new, being able to say, "Hey, how、yeah. are you?" Yeah, there's an exchange that's being done, and then you're, the, it's being increased. Yeah. So I, I think those are aspects that we really、uh, mm. forget about, and we try to. Think that talent has to do more with like, oh, you're really artistic, or、mm. you you have this, you know,、uh, you're a good speaker, you、um, you're good with、um, you know youth people or something.、Mm. But it, and, and those are part of it. But it, it's just the idea that you have to use it in exchange with other people to、um, mm. build it.、Mm. Yeah, no, that's really good. I you know obviously you have to understand this in the grid of Jesus's priorities. Which is love God, love neighbor, and what is a multiplication in the kingdom? It's a multiplication of love, right? And so, what kind of value are you bringing to people through your time, through your resources? You know, or, or is it redemptive?、Uh, and sometimes redemptive can feel kind of constricting, but redemptive in the sense like, are you just bringing love into people's life, and are they experiencing Jesus through you, and is that multiplying in the relationships that?、Mm. That you're having, yeah, I, I think that's a good way to see it.、Uh, by the way, I, I noticed when they、uh, did the scripture reading, they did the newest NIV, which translates as "bags of gold." Yes, yes. Because historically,、right. people have so misunderstood talent to be this thing. Now, I don't know if I would have chosen bags of gold. Sure, <laughs> sure. I think I know what they were trying to aim at, but not just a piece of gold, but like bags of gold.、Yeah. Uh, you know. There's a unit of commerce. <laughs> <laughs> the J J K N I P. Anyway,、mm-hmm. yeah.、Uh, and I think this is, you know,、uh, the other part of me、um, kind of wrestles with like it's not just like what we think about the parable, right? It's also like what is Jesus trying to do with this parable? Because sometimes we forget as as people who are reading the Bible、mm-hmm. that like. Yes, the Bible should be speaking to me personally, but we can't forget that Jesus was a person walking around in this world, and he was trying to do something with these parables,、mm-hmm. right? He was trying to.、Uh, I mean, unless we read that he's having a one-to-one interaction, oftentimes he has to say a big thing to a lot of people, and there are going to be a multitude of interpretations, and there are going to be a lot of different ways in which it is. It is received, which speaks to why we take this so seriously in the church. Because, in the same way, we we say this big thing to a lot of people with multiple inter- interpretations, and and just trying to get back to the idea of like what was Jesus trying to do with this message? Maybe he was just trying to shake people up out of their doldrums、mm-hmm. mm. to be like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come to church and not do anything.、Mm. You know what I mean? And 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 I think as pastors, it it's it's. It's right and it's fitting to say, like, shake yourself out of that. You know, like do something, like do something.、Uh, but then to also remember that, like, to different servants, he's giving different things because it's not necessarily like, you know, the question here is, what if the one who was given ten talents, what if, what if he only increased it by one, and so when the master comes back, he gives back eleven and not twenty. As it says, right? Yeah. And what if the person who gave five, what if they increased it by fifty? And so when the master comes back, he gives back fifty-five and not ten,、mm-hmm. as it says, right? And it's like it's not necessarily about the amount itself that is given back, but maybe it just has more to do with the heart motive that says, "Let me increase it for the Lord,"、mm-hmm. right?、Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean. I think there's we could go on and on and, and we we will you know yeah I I I want to share a couple of thoughts because these really were pretty convicting as as we're talking at least for me maybe it'll be for other people I have no idea but I feel like a lot of Jesus's parables are given as to build up almost a spiritual immune system inside of us、mm. uh, meaning like I actually feel like 
you're supposed to see yourself in the the lazy servant. Uh, just like the parable of the Good Samaritan. Everybody wants to be the Samaritan, right? At least from the modern perspective. Sure. Right? Back then, they were like, no, we hate the Samaritan. <laughs> yeah. but, but regardless, I, I, I feel like we're supposed to see ourselves as the people who failed to care for these people. And I think it's their kind of, like, as we're examining ourselves spiritually to, to realize, oh, there are parts of us inside of us that have been this thing and we need to shore ourselves up. And that's God's kind of way of kind of, you know, fighting against giving you those antibodies. The other thought I had was I'm curious if, we can tr- we can interpret this as um, you know where Jesus says if your hand causes you to sin cut it off. He's not being literal, clearly. But what he's communicating. So a lot of people is interesting when people say, "Oh, he's not being literal." They oh, whew, I, I'm glad, but they're missing the point because mm-hmm. what he's saying there is that's how serious this is. It's so serious that, you know, it's as if you should cut off your hand and things like that. And yeah. I'm curious if right here, the the point of this last part is uh, Jesus saying, you not using your resources for the kingdom, that's how serious this is. Mm-hmm. It's not just a matter of, oh, you're just not doing your job. But this is like critical, central stuff for the kingdom of God. And you not doing it is actually equating it. I mean, this is just how serious it is. And, and so that's, I, I'm curious if that's a part of what Jesus is trying to communicate. So. That was great. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, again, we, we, you know, we can go on and on about the spiritual implications, ramifications of a message like this. I wondered though, if we could make a turn for a second. Yeah. Um, Pastor Joey, before we started the podcast, you had mentioned that you saw our last one. Mm-hmm. You saw the, <laughs> the conversation yeah. and how it went. Uh-huh. Uh, this is just something that I like to ask sometimes. Okay. Okay. I, I often ask. Uh, it often comes up in our staff meetings mm-hmm. because like, we'll, we'll meet on Tuesday after Sunday and we'll sort of, how did it go? You know, how did you do mm-hmm. sort of everything that you wanted to do? Oh, yeah. Even, um, even before the the podcast started, we had a brief interaction and you were telling me a little bit about how you were feeling. Yeah, yeah. I wondered if I might ask, how, how do you feel? <laughs> like, how do you feel you did in the delivery of it? And this is more oh, like a okay. going away from the spiritual stuff. I, and this is more like a nuts and bolts question as a, as a fellow preacher mm-hmm. who is around sitting around a table with other fellow preachers. Mm-hmm. How, how do you feel like you did? How, 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 was, how did it feel giving the sermon? How did it feel? Um, one of the main questions I like to ask is, did you do everything that you wanted to do in the message? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like sometimes we write these little turns Mm -hmm. and and we have Mm -hmm. these places that we really want to go. Did you, were you able to hold yourself to those things? Okay. All right. Before I answer that, I got to tell you, uh, you chose a hymn in the very beginning. Yes. Uh, It it is well, Uh, which is a personal, um, really, um, uh, it, it marks a, a very specific time in, in my life. Mm-hmm. And so I got really emotional, <laughs> oh, wow. you know? So, uh, but thank you for that. And so when I went up, I, I, I was a little <laughs> like unsettled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, w- when you get up on the stage, it's so bright yeah. and it's dark. So it was just something that I wasn't used to. And I, I, I need glasses, but, you know, mm-hmm. I was looking at my uh, manuscript. I couldn't oh, no. really see it well. Oh, sure. oh, no. And then my mouth got so dry. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, no. Anyway, so this is how I felt. Um, uh-huh. So that's how I felt during yeah. during yeah. the um, <laughs> the presentation. And then um, it's so hard to read um, um, a room when you can't really see. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> um, I, I guess at the end, I wasn't feeling so good. <laughs> oh, no. We got to turn the lights on, guys. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Um, but that's okay because you know I like to uh, make myself feel better after by always telling myself, you know, it's not up to you anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that's what yeah. I say all the time, one hundred percent of the time. <laughs> There's this thing called the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Let him work. That's He's right. also God. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so funny that you say that. You know, <clears throat> I'm wondering if. 
there is a common thread here about the setting <laughs> and the environment yeah. of our church. Yeah. We probably need to work on that. And that, that falls on me. Uh, I'm the worship pastor. I, I, I'm in charge of kind of like setting the room. And we are looking to try to brighten that room because um, as was said multiple times uh, this past Sunday, it was our first uh, Sunday back in the auditorium after like eight months. Mm. And um, it's it's been re- re- renovated. It's It's been updated. All the light fixtures work in tip-top shape, which right now is a... It, it doesn't work to our benefit because we used to just keep the light switch on full blast, but because the bulbs were so dull, it illuminated the room perfectly as what mm-hmm. we needed. But yeah, the it's either like too bright or too dark and we mm-hmm. opted for the darker option. Yeah. And I'm wondering if we need to, to kind of um, fix all that stuff, yeah. you know, and, and we will, and we'll work on yeah. it. But. Oh no, it's not that I was so bothered by that. It was mm-hmm. just so new. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I felt, um, I felt personally bad because uh, we were kind of scrambling last minute. Yeah. Like usually about 9.45, we'll sit and we'll kind of settle and we'll introduce you. But right, we were like, we got to start. And then yeah. we, we, so I felt bad about that. And like, oh, this is not boding well for her feeling comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, not at all. I didn't feel that at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it is it is a thing when you're standing up there. To yeah. Get used to it. Yeah, it's interesting. But do you guys want to see the people? I just imagine them <laughs> why, smiling. Why? I just <laughs> imagine them all like with their hands up, like, you know, mm. loving yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is not the case. Because we're in a Baptist and charismatic environment that they would do so. <laughs> um, uh, well, this, um, this, uh, it just kind of speaks to again. It's it's a nuts and bolts question, really, is what this mm-hmm. is. But you know, as a preacher, um, uh, how often are you preaching on a Sunday at, at your at your home church right now? Yeah. So um, we are on a rotation with uh, the adult service. Uh, so th- there are three. Um, yeah, there are three uh, pastors who are on a rotation on uh, for the adult service, and so for the adult service, I preach like every six. Seven weeks. Weeks. Okay. Mm-hmm. For the youth, uh, um, I was supposed to do it this Sunday, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for an extension. So nice. nice. I'll be doing it in two weeks. And then with the children as well. So we're on rotation for oh, wow. all three. Oh, wow. All yeah. three preaching pastors are on rotation mm-hmm. for all three. Mm hmm. We oh, but then we have that. a yeah, we have a youth pastor. Why you gotta share this stuff? <laughs> okay. I think it's a great idea. My kids ask about that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do have a youth pastor and a children's pastor, yeah. but because they're doing it every week, you know, uh, oh. there was a need for oh, wow. um, them to have some sort of break. You want Pastor Key? I, wanna, <laughs> I want Pastor Key to Can give... Can we edit this out, please? <laughs> a 45-minute sermon to the kids. Oh, with my 11 goodness. pages of his manuscript. Mm, dude, 10 minutes in, there's going to be a kid that goes, Can you tie my shoes? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Happens all the time. Oh, that, that's great, though. That's yeah. pretty cool. I didn't that's know that. awesome. Speaking of manuscripts, and this is, um, this we all vary on this, but when you write a sermon and when you give a sermon, and I wonder how it, how it differs from when you speak at your home church and when you take like uh, guest speaking opportunities, right? Are you someone that needs every word? of what's coming out of your mouth to be on the page. How, how, how much do you fit in those little ums and ahs and you knows, you know, I, I put in a lot of those things, a lot of those breaks, uh, just to remind myself to break it up, to pause. Mm -hmm. Um, I put a lot of those things in, but I don't do a lot of word for word things. Um, I, I keep myself to a, certain length in terms of like page mm-hmm. notes and all that stuff. So what, what does your process look like? Oh, I'd also love to know in an ideal world, how many hours are you devoting to a message, a fresh new message? Okay. You know, I listened to uh, your discussion about all that. Yeah. Um, and um, I agree. There's no correlation. Between yeah. How many hours? You- yeah. No. Yep. None. 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 None
Um, sometimes the Holy Spirit will just fall on you. You yeah, get the best message of your life. Yeah, sometimes you're preparing one and you feel like, oh, you're crying because the word, word is speaking to you. And then when you go up and preach, it's like flat. Yeah, like, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pearls to swine. <laughs> Easy does it on that side of the table. Something's Easy. on here. Something's on this side today. I don't know. Huh. Um, so in an yeah. ideal world, how many hours? In an ideal world, I would do it all day long. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know? But, you know, uh, you're not afforded that kind of sure. time. Sure. But um, typically, I would say... Uh, 30 hours 30 mm-hmm. is that that is that princeton training no i think it's it's uh it's tohi tohi just like to sit <laughs> and just meditate <laughs> i think it's personality training yes yeah. i mean or have something about the process as yeah. well. okay. <laughs> 30 hours okay yeah and hours. a lot of it's just sitting and just like wow yeah and something like that yeah wow and uh what's what's your like actual words on the page is it you need every single thing that comes out of your mouth to be on the page? Yeah. I don't usually follow every single, but I need to write it out only because when I was younger, I got to tell you, I used to pride myself on my memory, but <laughs> I'm so bad now. Uh-huh. I can't remember anything uh-huh. anymore that I need to write it out. Uh-huh. Otherwise, so I'm just not going to. Yeah. That's my, ugh, man, people have good memory. I get so jealous. Yeah. I forget. Do, are, are you guys... Super strict words on the page. Yeah, me. Yeah. yeah oh, for heck sure. yeah. Yeah. I am initially, but I try to go away from it. Yeah. But I want to be somebody that doesn't need the manuscript. Yeah. It's not because I memorized it, it's because I know it so well that it just flows out of me. Sure. Mm. I can't wait for the day that I could do yeah. that. But right now, word for word, <laughs> every single word mm. on my page is what yeah. you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's interesting. I. I have an interesting relationship with word for word versus bullet points or whatever, because I, if it's too, if there are too many words on the page and I'm reading, I lose out on dynamics. Mm, mm-hmm. If I focus too hard on dynamics, yeah. I lose out on the content. Mm. And Oh, what a struggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, no. it's honestly such a huge battle. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And that's really... The battle I find myself in every yeah. week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not fun. Oh, the joys of pastoral ministry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know what's interesting is that when I preach to youth, not that I do it often, but like the couple of times, the few times that I've done it, I don't really need word for word. But when I know I'm in a room of like smart people, I need. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I care. I mean, generally speaking, I care so much about how I'm delivering, what words I've chosen to say this, mm-hmm. that I need every word. But when I'm talking to the youth, I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> can, I, yeah. can I share something? It's what? a confession. Go ahead, go ahead. So past years, there, the, this past year, there's been some seasons where I've been so busy I didn't have time to really prepare. And I'll find, like, one Saturday, I just put together, like, 45 minutes, a few bullet points, and just talked from it. I found one correlation. The less I prepare, the better feedback I get. <laughs> Yo, oh, huh. uh. And part of it, I think, is because when I'm not tied to my manuscript, mm. I'm just telling a story. Yeah. You know, and people are more engaged and stuff. Uh. I don't know, man. So it's just a, this tension. It's not. Yeah. There should be some correlation between hours put in and something. I don't know. Not at all. So painful. I don't think that's like the kingdom. What do you call it? What do you call it? What do you call that? Economy. Ex- yeah, know. economy or like exchange or what is it? I, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Right? I, I think it's the whole talents thing. <laughs> we're back to the whole talents thing where we're trying to measure the thing that we were given yeah. and we try to give it back the exact right. amount there versus the go. whatever, you know. I think we're all trying to do with the one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're all trying something here. Yeah. We're all trying to turn one into ten. Yeah, that, that's to really do. what we're trying to do. That's, that's right. why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why. That's why. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on with it. Come on with it, please. You know, um, I keep thinking about the time when, to me, I preached the worst. <laughs> I mean, afterwards, I felt so awful. Oh, no. I, I... Re- 
like um like you shared in your last uh yeah. i was like depressed for like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> two okay, weeks it's okay. think, you know <laughs> but for that sermon i got all these texts right <laughs> saying like you know i was really like touched i you know i it really motivated me what i was like what no nah. it doesn't make any sense that you would yeah so i, I do feel there's it's like the coming. holy spirit put blinders on yeah. your ears they heard some some other message yeah <laughs> yeah but then i get really um yeah see then i but i kept thinking it's because they knew it was such a struggle uh, oh, I see. I see. <laughs> wow yeah it's like it's that it's that odd tension between the Lord will humble you mm-hmm. or you can humble yourself. And, you know, oftentimes it's, it, it would be better if you humbled yourself, mm-hmm. but every once in a while, the Lord's got to humble you too yeah. <laughs> to make sure that you know yeah. why you need to humble yourself sometimes. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's so funny. Okay. And then this is maybe like one of the last few nuts and bolts questions that I'll ask. And it's more of a personality thing for me. I'm a guy that after um, a message, particularly a bad message, I need to like comfort myself and I need to totally get my mind away (laughs) from the hot heaping garbage that I just (laughs) gave on a Sunday morning or whatever. Um, And I just said, I just said last week that the last time I preached for for our Sunday message, I felt the same way. Um, And I'm a guy that I just need to be watching TV for a while to just completely (laughs) wash out my brain. So to just be like, Lord, whatever that was, that you got to then take over, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what, what's something for you that helps you maybe uh, tear yourself away from like going into those unhelpful feedback loops, um, which I'm guessing is something that will happen in your life, right? Especially after a message that you don't feel like too, too hot about that you gave. Mm-hmm. Um, what's something that helps you get out of those unhelpful feedback loops? Is it taking a walk is it reading is it going out with friends or what's that what helps for you um food is always a good yes place to go yes um my personality is such that i don't want to avoid it i need someone to i need to confront it so oh. i will actually talk to my husband Ina, oh. and i'll tell him i'll cry oh, <laughs> and I'll tell him no. everything that i feel and he'll listen and he's so honest he'll tell me if it was really bad Oh my God! And then it'll make Shout me feel out to the spouse, yeah, yeah. yeah. So keeping it real, yeah, and it'll make me feel even worse. Does. But then I know, then you know, I know. Mm. So then it comforts me to know that at least um, someone was being really honest. Yeah, that's wow. brutal. Yeah, why are spouses like that? My spouse is like that. <laughs> I think you need at least one person to be that for you, no? Yeah, yeah I think so. Right? No? Yeah. Everybody can text you is wonderful. And your spouse be like, no. <laughs> or as it was last week, it wasn't your worst. <laughs> oh, That's man. So good. I still come There's back to that. Line. I still come back to that line. Rala, if you're watching, we love you. We love the, the yeah. hot heaping fire that you're putting our pastor through because it only makes him more humble and more holy. And we we'll love see. him for it. Or more bitter. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see where it goes. Uh, That's awesome. Um, I think this is a pretty good place uh, to land. Um, But for those of uh, us who are listening and watching Pastor Dohiwi, if we wanted to, um, to maybe get a little bit more... Um, I don't know, message or content or, 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 or teaching that you're doing, is there a way to stay in touch with whatever you're doing? Is there stuff that you're putting out that you want to put out there? Or is it just all Joy Christian Fellowship? Just be a part of that. You know, um, I don't know what it is. Uh, I mean, the ongoing joke is that it's me. That uh, whenever I preach, something goes wrong. And so it doesn't get recorded or it doesn't oh, get no. live streamed. No, or it's something yeah. happens. That. I know. You know? And Same. so there's very... Uh, there's uh, yeah very few. Um, I used to um, have a blog. Do people blog anymore? Why um, not? Why not? Yeah, things you like that. Hold that mantle for as long as you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, there's really nothing, and that, <laughs> that sounds really bad. But I am writing something. Okay. Oh, yeah, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, but it's fiction, so it doesn't really make sense. Why yeah. not? No, it makes sense. Yeah. I love fiction. Yeah. So. I mean, we all need to exercise our sanctified imaginations here and there. Yes, yes. You know, um, 
And if I may ask, um, this is something that I'm just going to take the opportunity to ask. Is there a specific way that we could be praying for you, your ministry, your church, kind of anything that's going on, even personally? Is there is there a way that we can be partnering with you in prayer? Yeah, you know, um, my major focus in terms of ministry right now is uh, putting p- together some really good classes. I have a mm. good team right now of, um, of people who are teaching, but I really want to get think outside the box about what kind of classes we teach. Mm. And so, um, yeah, if you could just pray for that. Mm. And then, um, but if you had to prioritize prayers, I don't know if from my church is going to listen to this. Mm. <laughs> um, I want a more personal prayer. I'll send it to Isaac. I'll send it to Isaac. Um, which is, um, I am working on a novel. Yeah. Okay. Oh, exciting. And, yeah, if you could really pray for that. Wow. It's fantastic. Yeah. Man, I'm so novel. excited. Uh, uh, could you give us like a quick 20 or 30 seconds about what it's going to be about? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a different world. Um, you we, Before you're born, you see your whole future played out in front of you, in, in, in your mother's womb. And then the minute you are born, um, there are people who read your future for your parents. And then they they put it in a book and they save it for you until you turn 17. Whoa. Oh, that's the book? Yeah. Oh, this shoot. is unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. That sounds so imaginative. I love it. Well. Yeah. Oh, but my uh, main character, um, she's what you call it, eerie, short for uh, irretrievable. Her um, her um, womb visions were not retrieved when she was born, so she, she has a blank slate. Oh. And so she feels... Sounds she was, like sci-fi. Yeah, so she feels very forsaken. Wow. Someone without a future, and so... Hey, That's when you be- when you become famous, yeah, wow. come to this podcast. Yeah, come back, please. Okay, yeah, remember us. Yeah, yeah my name is us. Bo Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> um, please let us know whenever that work has yeah. been finished. Wow. It's it's published and and that's something that we're gonna we're in, we're in our library right now. Yeah, that's know, something that I'm guessing that we're gonna have yeah. uh, on the shelves yep. um, of yeah. this library. Mm-hmm. Please let us know. We'll yeah, have multiple yeah. copies. Um, I really want to be honest about this. I in the past I was never able to share this with people publicly, mm-hmm. and yeah. I could never speak it into a hope and dream. Yeah. yeah. But I am putting it out there. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Okay. Well, if you're listening, if you're watching, I mean, what a treat that was for Pastor Doi to just share her heart. I mean, she shared us her story, but now that she would share her heart, something that she wants to put out there and and hope into existence. And, Mm. um, you know, my hope is that you would have people around you who would help you every single day to get there. Mm. Um, We want to be partners with you in that, in that dream, in that vision. Uh, We also want to partner with you in prayer for everything that's going on with your church and all the classes that you want to build out the curriculum that you want to do for your church. Um, I think all three of us um, are very staunch believers in the local church and Mm. what it does in the greater body. Um, Like the small C church, when that thrives, the Big C Church just becomes better. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially mm-hmm. being in the same region, mm-hmm. um, I'm also personally someone who believes that um, when multiple churches in a region thrive, the region itself becomes revived. I'm a huge believer in that. Um, and so just from New Mercy Palisades to Joy Christian Fellowship, we hope that everything that's happening in and through the walls, the ministry of your church, um, it really begins to thrive yeah. and that your people are, are ministered to. So, Thank you for Any that. last thoughts, words from you guys? No, I was just thinking, actually, we have very personal connections now with Joy, mm-hmm. uh, at least on the staff level. And so I was, I would love for us to just stay partnered. Yeah. Yeah. Connected. And, yeah. You know, that's, be fantastic. that's what I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. 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 Come hang out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. And, uh, oh, if you need people to read pre-published copies of your book, let me know. Yes. I can read that, too. <laughs> yes, I can read as well. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, that'll do it for us here at uh, New Mercy Palace H Church and NPC Plus. 
uh, for from all of us, we want to thank you again, Pastor Doi, for joining us. It really was a treat, a pleasure. You are our second ever guest on this podcast. Yeah. Yes. That's right. That's and right. you are the first <laughs> of the new year as well. That's right. That's so right. So you are kind of in uh, top territory here. And so uh, your your name is going to go on the on our wall somewhere. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know exactly where. Right there, I it's, think. It's going on the wall right somewhere. Um, how about this? You're the first guest that we've had in this studio oh, that's right. space kind of a this thing. is only second week we've had this second studio week. Space. wow second week uh first ever guest uh thank you again yeah. um for for the rest of us if you're listening if you've been watching thank you also for joining us um you know we're just we're just trying to put stuff out there that ministers um to our people and now hopefully uh with the representative from joy christian fellowship that it would also be a blessing for your people you know mm. get them to listen to this podcast okay. get them to know a little bit more of your heart one of the mm. things i'm noticing uh, about this podcast is um you know all that ministry we leave on the table because we're only able to give like a 40 minute message on a sunday morning um our people get to reclaim some of that because they yeah. get to hear some of the things that we're saying mm. they get to hear some of the things that we didn't get to say on that sunday morning and then they get even more from that that message or even from our ministry so we hope that this does all of that but whatever the case is we hope that you are blessed uh, we thank you for listening and uh yeah we'll we'll end it right here this is nmpc plus signing off for now